About a year ago, I had the crazy opportunity to design some official merchandise for the band Iron Maiden and the 40th anniversary of the album Power Slave. The brief was basically to redesign the classic artwork by Derek Riggs into something new for the anniversary. It's always challenging coming up with new ideas for artwork that's been around for 40 years already and has already been adapted in so many different ways. But I thought this particular design in general would make a really cool tutorial. It's an effect I've not really seen used before. I am, however, just to be clear, going to redesign it slightly differently. The effect will be exactly the same but I'm gonna use a different layout and different colors just so my original design can't be exactly copied. Make sure to hit the like button if you find this tutorial useful. Let's hop into Photoshop. So here is the original artwork that we're going to redesign. If I zoom in, you can see more closely that it's a scan of the original painting, which is pretty sweet. Anyway, first thing we're gonna do to this is head on down to the right and add a solid color adjustment layer. From here, you're gonna to wanna to choose a orangey brown color. This can be changed at any point, so no need to be too specific just yet. Next up, we're gonna add a black and white adjustment layer because we don't wanna be worrying about colors just yet. And then we're gonna change the blending mode of the orange color layer to hard mix. So as you can see, we've ended up with a sort of two color thresholdy effect. So it's starting to take shape, but it still doesn't look that great. Make sure your artwork layer is selected, then head up to image, adjustments, hue and saturation. Then we're gonna bring the saturation all the way down, which is gonna really help smooth out the image. Then we're gonna go back up to image, adjustments, shadows and highlights. Then we're gonna bring the shadows all the way up, which is really gonna help bring out the details. Now we can head back to our orange color layer and mess around until we find a better balance. Bearing in mind, the color is always gonna to need to be around the orangey red, yellow area, or it's not gonna work very well. Next, we're gonna go up to camera raw filter, in here, we're gonna crank up the sharpening and the noise reduction. So head down to the detail section and crank both up to 100, depending on your image, obviously. This one is really grainy, so I wanted to remove a lot of the noise to make the next effect work better. You can see if I zoom in a bit, the effect that that's having, really, really good stuff. And obviously, once you're done, click OK. Now for the main effect, which is oil paint, which seems like a weird one, but trust me, head up to filter, stylize and oil paint and copy the settings I'm using if you want to but best to just experiment with your own image just because everything reacts a little bit differently. This effect gives the image a really cool cartoony look. When you're happy click OK and head up to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Unsharp mask is used to really sharpen up an image and reduce noise and when used in conjunction with other effects it can really help a design pop. I really hate that word but it literally does just that. As you can see, it's really bringing out the details of the mummy. Take your time with it though, and experiment with whatever image you're using. Once you're happy, click OK. So that's the main image effects all dialed in, and we can now actually go back to the solid color layer that we uh, did at the start, and basically mess around with that, and try and find if there's a slightly better, uh, I wanna say color, but you're not really using it for the color, you just wanna see if you can bring out some more details in the image or take away some details if you feel like it's too much. Even though I've done my absolute best to bring out all the details of the image, sometimes it just isn't enough and you need to draw extra details back in. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do now with the lightning coming from the mummy's eyes. So what I'm doing now is I've got the original image and I'm putting it on top of the new uh, effects image that we've made and I'm bringing down the opacity so I can see it slightly so I can basically see the original lightning coming from the eyes of the original mummy and I'm gonna trace it back in. So I've made a new layer above everything else and I'm just using a normal white brush just to fill in the lightning and we'll worry about the colors in a little while. I'm pretty sure when I did this originally I used my iPad Pro uh, which obviously means using the Apple Pencil to draw in the lightning. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with doing it with the mouse, which is exactly what I'm doing now. It just takes a little bit more time and it's harder to get kind of pointy parts, if you know what I mean, because you don't have the pressure control of any kind of pencil or tablet. So you kind of just have to use the eraser and erase it at the ends to kind of get pointy parts. And it just takes a little bit longer, basically, but it's completely doable. 
Thank God that's done. So now we can actually start bringing this design to life and I'm gonna start by bringing the Iron Maiden logo. Like I said at the start, I'm gonna make this slightly different from my original design. So I'm gonna find a new placement for the logo. I think somewhere on the sides will look cool and behind the mummy. So its hand is over the logo, which gives a, gives a bit of depth and perspective to the design. Somewhere around there will do. So you'll notice at the start of the video, I started off with a cutout of the mummy and this is actually what it looked like before, before it was cut out. And I wanna add some of them hieroglyphics back into the design. I think it will look cool as the general theme is Egyptian. Anyways, I'm gonna do that by going up to image adjustments and adding a threshold to the image. And I'm gonna adjust the threshold till the hieroglyphics look quite clear. Somewhere around there. Then I'm gonna head over to the magic wand tool and select any black area of the image and press Ctrl J, which will then duplicate the black part of the image and leave us with just the black and no white background. Then we can grab the lasso tool and make a quick rough selection around the hieroglyphics we wanna use. And then once you've made a selection, press Ctrl J again, which will duplicate just that part we've just selected. Now we can just drag those hieroglyphics straight onto our design canvas and obviously change the color so we can see them. So now I'm just gonna continue this process until I've got all the hieroglyphics in the design that I wanna use. It's probably hard to see if you're watching on a phone, but the hieroglyphics are a bit um, grainy, so they're gonna need a bit of cleaning up around the edges. So I'm basically just gonna group them, apply a layer mask, and then paint out some of the extra grain. After that, all I'm doing is just some of the final layout adjustments and I decided to also add in some more hieroglyphics down the bottom right area. And I also added in the Power Slave logo. So after messing around with the layout for ages, we can now finally add some color. Head down to the bottom right little circle menu, no idea what it's called, and select gradient maps. And this is a nice easy way Quite a quick way to add colour to a design. It's not the only way, but it is definitely an easy, quick way to do it. Essentially, before we added the gradient map adjustment layer, the design was made up of different levels of grey, and each of those levels of grey are now going to be replaced by a colour that we assign on the gradient map. And as you can see, I've chosen a red and a beige colour. To finish off this design, we're going to add some vintage distressed texture. If you're unsure on how to do that, I have a separate tutorial as well as some free texture brushes that you can pick up and I will try and remember to link them down below in the description. Essentially, we're gonna group everything together, that's a nice dog, into one folder and apply a layer mask. I say everything, you don't want to include the background in that. Then select your chosen texture brush and basically stamp the design. Again, check out my other tutorial if you want more detail on how to do this. Right, let's get this design mocked up and see how it looks. Thanks so much guys for checking out the video. I really appreciate it. Make sure to follow me on Instagram to actually see my real work and I will catch you in the next video.